Welcome to the second objective of the plate tectonic series. And this one is going to be a little longer because there's a lot to talk about. We're going to be talking about the movements of the Earth's plates, which are those pieces of crust that move route past each other, and how that results in the geological structures or land features that we recognize and learn about. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the different types of plates boundaries there are. So you have plates going towards each other in what is called a conversion boundary. And that could be a continent colliding with a continent or a continent colliding with an ocean or a ocean colliding with an ocean. And you all have divergent boundaries, which is when a continent splits apart and then eventually you form an ocean in between. Or you have a transform boundary, which is uh, two pieces of plate sliding past each other. So convergent towards, divergent away, transform sliding past. Now, each of these features will have specific structures that you should be able to recognize and know what shows up on when and why. So let's get to that. Now, there are features that show up in every type of boundary or multiple type of boundaries. And the first one I'm going to talk about is faults. Faults are basically large cracks in the Earth's surface. And whenever you have large pieces of Earth's crust moving towards, away, or past each other, you're going to get rocks stuck to each other. You're going to get tension. You're going to get rocks cracking and that is what happens it causes faults now the types of faults you get actually mimic the types of plate movements when the plates move away from each other or rocks move away from each other you end up ripping those rocks apart and then what forming what is called a normal fault where one of the rocks will sink underneath the other compared to the other and cause a normal fault when you have pressure instead of that stretching tension you have going to end up having rocks bumping against each other until finally one gives and goes on top of the other, and you have rocks pile on top of each other with what is called a reverse fault. And then if you have rocks sliding past each other, they will get trapped on each other and kind of get stuck and then slip and then get stuck and that slip, and that will happen a strike and slip fault. Now, it's true that strike and slip faults will be common near transform boundaries. Reverse faults will be common near converging boundaries. And normal faults will be common near divergent boundaries. But it is possible to have these kinds of faults show up in any kind of boundary. It all depends on how the specific rocks involved are moving relative to each other near the boundary that we're talking about. Now, the, wherever you have faults, you're also going to get earthquakes. Earthquakes are violent releases of, of energy causing seismic waves, which are ground shakes, and that happens because rocks stuck against each other along those fault lines will end up getting deformed. And as they get deformed, just like an elastic band, there's only a certain point that you can take. Eventually, it will crack or slip. And if it does slip and crack, it can actually allow itself to deform back to normal, or at least a little bit, in a violent second that it releases an energy forming the shock wave of the earthquake. So it all happens because rocks are under strain along fault lines. So whenever you have fault lines, you're going to get earthquakes. And therefore, you're also going to get that at any kind of plate boundary. Then you have volcanoes. Transform boundaries, you're not going to see volcanoes. But on convergent and divergent boundaries, there's going to be volcanoes. A convergent boundary will have a plate sinking underneath the other. And a sinking plate will melt. And that melting magma, right, molten rock, will push through the other plate, causing a volcano to happen. And at a divergent boundary, as the plates split apart, magma will seep through the crack and fill the gap and actually cause volcanoes as well. Either way, in general, a volcano is an opening on the crust through which magma, can, magma, which is molten rock, can flow and become lava as it reaches the surface. Now, the lava will eventually cool down and form new rock, which is important because that's how new minerals, new rock materials are formed in the crust of the earth. In fact, the reason why volcanoes... Uh, uh, cause continents to get thicker and thicker over time is because more and lava keeps spilling over and forming thicker and thicker continents over millions and millions of years. By the way, volcanic eruptions don't have to be just molten rock. Sometimes it's ash, it's large pieces of rock, it's, it's gases and water vapor that come out of volcanoes. But when the lava does spill over, it does lead to formation of a lot of new rock. Lava also doesn't have to seep through the surface in order to form new rock. Sometimes it just kind of seeps through and, and goes in between cracks laterally in the rocks and ends up causing what is called an infiltration. And that infiltration will actually heat up the rocks around it, deform the rocks around it, 
and form new rocks that way as well. It's called uh, metamorphic rocks, right? Those kinds of rock formations will also be important for the rock cycles of the Earth. And the magma that intruded will also eventually cool down and form new igneous rocks buried underground. Altogether, volcanoes are important for the formation of new material in the crust of the planet. Now, if you trace the position of volcanoes and earthquakes, you will notice that they actually trace the actual borders of this, these plates. Notice how the picture on the right, which shows the plates, and the picture on the left, which shows earthquakes and volcanoes, there's a mirror image to that. The crack that exists in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is littered with earthquakes, as is the crack around the Nazca plate. And all around the convergent boundary in the western side of the Americas, you have volcanoes and earthquakes. Lots of earthquakes with the collisions between African plates and Eurasian plates, and between the Pacific plate and the Asian plate, and Australian plates. All of the plates' boundaries are traced by earthquakes. And the ones that have divergent or convergent boundaries will tend to also have volcanoes, especially the convergent ones. Notice here the large convergent boundaries surrounding the Pacific plate, which is shrinking as the Atlantic Ocean stretches. That's pushing the North American plate against the Pacific plate and the Nazca plate and pushing the Asian plate uh, and Australian plate against the Pacific plate, making the Pacific shrink over time. And all around that boundary, you have a chain of mountains and volcanoes. So you can trace the volcanoes and earthquakes to find the boundary types. This, by the way, is called the Ring of Fire, which is around the Pacific plate. Now let's talk about each type of plate in detail, starting with the divergent boundary and talking about the features that shows up on them. Divergent boundaries, again, happen when the plates rip apart. So it starts when magma plumes coming from the mantle push to the surface, stretch that plate and thin it out, and force it to go away from each other, causing the plate to eventually crack into a normal fault, and a piece will sink underneath, and through the cracks, lava will start to seep through, and as it seeps through, it will push the plates apart from each other. The western or the eastern part of Africa is undergoing that right now on what's called the Rift Valley. So this whole chunk of Africa right here, it's breaking apart. You can see that right here, a new divergent boundary that's forming in Africa. Now, eventually, that will actually fill in and form a new ocean. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, that eastern part of Africa it eventually will spread more and more as the plates get further and further apart, and then water will seep through the crack and do something similar to what happened here in the Red Sea. Water seeping through the Indian and the Mediterranean Sea and actually filling in the crack that formed a long time ago between the Arabian Peninsula and the Africa. So if you look at, there is a crack there too on the surface of the earth. And the same thing will happen with this crack and eventually it will have water seeping through from both sides and a new ocean will be born as Africa splits apart. Now, over many, 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 many years, this process will continue until finally you have a whole ocean in an ocean basin and the continents are completely separated from each other. And a ridge in between with magma seeping through, continuously pushing that ocean apart. So it starts with a crack. Eventually, it actually splits. And eventually, you get a whole ocean in between. So if you look at the Atlantic Ocean, these two pieces here, South America, used to be attached to Africa. And North America used to be attached to Europe. But that huge crack in the Earth's surface over millions and millions of years have separated those continents. The same thing happened here with the Indian Ocean, which made Antarctica migrate south and Australia migrate to the right. It used to be connected to Africa over here too, back when Pangaea was a thing. We'll talk more about this kind of stuff on the last video of the series. But divergent boundaries essentially will have what features? Well, they will have this valley in between where the crack is actually at and the earth is actually separating. That's called the Rift Valley. By the time that becomes an ocean, you're going to have a ridge to, because as the rocks are pushed apart, you're going to cause peaks and valleys in a ridge on this area. And you're going to have runny volcanoes because lava will seep through in between uh, that crack on the Rift Valley and fill in the gaps. You're, of course, going to have earthquakes and faults 
because a lot of rock motion means rocks stuck to each other. So what are the features which, which are only going to show up in divergent boundaries, though? That's the mid-ocean ridge, which is the uh, peaks and valleys near the rift valley. The rift valley, which is the crack, and new, new seafloor being formed from those running volcanoes. The next type of boundary I want to talk about is convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries will form wherever there is two plates colliding against each other. But as they collide, they will be forced to one will be forced to go above the other, and the other, the one that sinks, will end up subducting. Now, subduction is basically when one plate goes underneath the other, right? And the plate that subducts ends up melting. And as it melts, the magma, molten rock, will push through the other plate, causing a chain of volcanic mountains. Now, if you have an ocean against an ocean, those volcanic mountains will form an island arc. If you have a continent versus ocean, it will form a, a chain of mountains which are volcanic. Now, that does not tend to happen where a continent uh, hits another continent because the continental crust is too thick to, to push through when there's two continents colliding against each other because the mountain ranges that tend to form tend to be enormous. But that is for sure going to be mountains. Because as the collisions happens, the plate that doesn't subduct crumbles in cracks and forms a mountain range. So you get subduction plate, you get a mountain range on the other, volcanoes trying to punch through, not going to make it happen when it's a continent versus continent. All of this rock motion and cracking is going to cause earthquakes and faults, of course. The volcanoes that do form, by the way, tend to be more explosive because they're punching through a continental crust that's full of water and minerals that tend to clog the volcano, cause large pressure, and leading to large explosions. The last piece I'm going to talk about is this idea of a trench, which is a deep gash in the ocean floor that tends to happen near that boundary because the ocean is sinking underneath the other plate. So whenever there is an ocean versus ocean collision, you're also going to get a trench. So what are the continental uh, boundaries of our planet. Well, we have many of them. As you can see here, all around the edge of uh, South and North America, the Pacific and the Nazca plate are colliding with those continental plates, causing a large chains of mountains, which we call the Rockies and the Andes. And even the the Brooks Range on, on, the, on the Alaskan uh, part of the North American Peninsula are also going to be examples of that. Those are littered with volcanoes because the oceanic crust is melting as it sinks underneath the other plate. Uh, notice how that area is also littered with volcanoes and earthquakes, as we talked about before. And that is also part of that ring of fire of volcanoes. The ring of fire also extends to the western or the other side of the Pacific, where you will see a collision between oceanic plates and other oceanic plates. So the Pacific plate is colliding with the, uh, with the Mayan plate or the part of the uh, Australian plate, which is actually in the ocean. So those ocean versus ocean collisions will cause really deep trenches and chains of islands, like you're going to have um, Japan and the Philippines and, and um, New Zealand. All of those are island chains surrounding the other side of the ring of fire, but it really it's because the ground is uplifting, crumbling because of the collision between those two plates. And of course, you're also going to get volcanoes and earthquakes, as you see tracked on that picture. You also have another massive area of collisions happening between the African plate uh, and the Eurasian plate, and between the Australian plate and the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. And that leads to the formation of a large chain of mountains stretching from southern Europe all across the Asian and uh, and around this is going to be the Himalayas, which is the largest mountain range in the world because it's a huge continent, right? The Asian part colliding with India, and you also have the same kind of thing happens in the Alps, where the uh, uh, African plate is colliding against the uh, Eurasian plate. There are other ancient mountain ranges, by the way like the Appalachians, that is not near a boundary. But that's because it's a boundary that was formed a long time ago, back when Pangea formed. So it's an old mountain range. And that's why it's so eroded and the mountains are not so sharp. 
like the Alps and the Rockies and the Andes and the uh, uh, Himalayas are. They are old mountain ranges that already got eroded, and that's why um, it's 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 not near a continental boundary uh, plate. That's actually a colliding. It's an old collision from a long time ago, back when Pangaea formed. But what is common in all of these collisions is the formation of these mountain ranges with volcanoes, unless there is a continent versus continent collision like the Himalayas. And you're going to get lots of lots of earthquakes, faults. And every time there is an ocean versus continent collision, deep trenches like you will find uh, all around this ring of fire boundary as well. Now, the last type of boundary, do not, do not, before I actually leave the continental plates, let's do a review of important questions that are going to show up in the, in the exam about this. So form, mountains are going to form every time you have a continent colliding with, a, uh, with an, uh, another plate. You're also going to have, when oceans collide with continents, it's going to be the ocean that's going to go underneath. And the reason why that happens is because the oceanic plate tends to be denser than the continental plate. Oceanic crust, remember, is newer. It came from those mid-ocean ridges, and that means material from the mantle formed it. And since the mantle tends to be denser than the crust, the oceanic crust tends to be denser than the continental crust, which is old material that was crust to begin with. By the way, the continental crust grows over time through the volcanic eruptions that fill it in, and also because as the oceanic plate subducts underneath the continental plate, the continental plate will scrape off any volcanic mountains or any other thing that is on the top of that oceanic crust, and by doing so, create thicker and thicker continents and grow that grow over time as they scrape off material from the oceanic crust and volcanic material erupts as the oceanic crust melts underneath. That's what happens with the plate that melts, it, uh, that goes underneath. It does melt. We also have, uh, of course, collisions that happen between two continental plates. And as you can see, the largest difference is that you don't see that magma rising because it's too thick to melt through. And you also see larger mountain ranges uh, because it's two enormous continents colliding against each other, leading to enormous plateaus in mountain ranges because of that. So you don't get a volcanic arc, and you get, but you do get larger mountains. Trenches will also form your continental continent uh, versus ocean and or ocean versus ocean collisions. These are large gaps in the bottom of the sea floor that happen near the edge as the sea is sinking underneath. If you were to go to that gap, you would just see a rock next to another rock. Of course, there'll be no sunlight down there because it's super, super deep. Now, whenever there is a trench that between two oceanic plates, they will be especially deep, like the Marianas Trench that happens in the Pacific. The Pacific is already the oldest ocean in the planet and are, is really, really deep. And so if you go even deeper than that because of a subducting plate, you're going to end up with a super deep, over 11,000 meters deep. That is much, much deeper than Mount Everest, all right? That's over 33,000 feet. Uh, so that's an, a, a very, very, very deep trench and gap in the Earth's surface. It is, in fact, the deepest point on the Earth's surface and the closest you can get uh, to, to being... Uh, to the going to the mantle in the Pacific plate because it is a very, very deep gash. All right. The last type of plate thing that we have to talk about is the idea of convergent boundaries and its unique features. So what you're only going to see in convergent boundaries are subduction, trenches, and mountain ranges. And we've already defined them. So there you have it. The last type of boundary we have to discuss is the transform boundary. It's a little easier because they don't have any volcanoes. They don't have any mountains. All you have is two plates sliding past each other, and that's going to cause faults and earthquakes, which is something common to all plates. Now, this could happen in the continent or in the ocean. It's, it's interesting when it happens in the ocean, by the way, because it can actually crack a ridge in half. You know, the mid-ocean ridges, those, those pieces that actually make the oceans grow? If a transform boundary happens in between, you're going to actually get the rift to actually split and you can tell that that's a transform boundary there because these used to, be, used to be lined up, but they actually got split and carried to the side. And then because of that, uh, you get two series of spread, spreading oceans in between. So this, this, there's the pieces of the, of the Pacific, uh, of, of the uh, Atlantic, where that happens right here in, in the Scotia area 
near the border of South America. You have a transform boundary. Uh, you have transform boundaries here between the the African plate and European plate, which caused this ridge to be shifted. There's another interesting transform boundary right there. There's a famous transform boundary on the western part of North America, where the St. Andrews Fault is, uh, which is the one that is in this picture right here. So transform boundaries are just areas where the plates are sliding past each other, right? Um, by the way, before I leave this video, I, I, I'd be remiss if I said there are areas in the world where there are multiple boundaries at the same spot. So if you look here around the Philippines, right just north of Australia, uh, in the Micronesia and Polynesia, that is a serious area of cracking and boundaries. So that is why there's so many deadly earthquakes and tsunamis in that area, due to the fact that there are so many boundaries all at once. Same thing happens right here on near the Caribbean. Look how many boundaries all in one place, right? So whenever that's the case, you're going to end up having a sandwich of, of boundaries and then therefore lots and lots of deadly earthquakes. But the actual worst earthquakes in the history of the world uh, are probably going to be happening in this boundary here because there's a lot of motion happening between the Nazca plate and the South American plate. And that's why the Andes are one of the fastest growing mountain ranges in the world uh, due to that uh, boundary right there. Okay, so let's review everything we talked about in this one comprehensive image of the boundary types. So you have convergent boundaries like this one, where one plate un goes underneath the other. In this case, it's an ocean versus a continent. So then the oceanic plate ends up melting, pushing through and causing volcanic uh, mountains in the continental plate. But that continental plate can also split apart and cause what is called a rift zone or a young plate boundary where the continent's ripping apart, like it's happening to Africa. Whenever there is an, a sinking ocean, there's also going to be that trench. But in the middle of the ocean, you will find a divergent boundary where the ocean is growing from into both directions. Now, that could also be split by a transform boundary causing a shift, sideways shift into it. You also can get co collisions between oceans and oceans where you're going to get a, a chain of islands. That's the same kind of thing as the chain of mountains, except since you start from the ocean, you're going to get a chain of islands instead, like like, to like uh, Japan and the Philippines and New Zealand. We talked about that. And you're also going to get volcanoes because the sinking oceanic plate is going to melt as well. By the way, they're both probably equally as dense, so it's just one of them is going to win and end up going down underneath. One thing I didn't mention, but it's going to be important on another video, is this idea of hotspot volcanoes. That's just tiny areas of of intense magma activity through which the lava can push through the crust. That's going to be more common in the ocean because the crust is thinner than the continental plate, but there are hot spots in continents as well, like the Yellowstone hot spot in the North American plate. Uh, but the hot spot volcanoes like this, like the Hawaii volcano, will also happen away from boundaries and cause the formation of these shield volcanoes, uh, which form as lava spills over from the bottom and eventually it will actually punch to the surface and form things like Hawaii does. Continental volcanoes and stratovolcanoes, uh, which are the ones that form near boundaries, tend to be more explosive than the hotspot volcanoes or the ones that form near ridges, mid ocean ridges, because those will have runny lava that's just spilling over and gathering over time. Meanwhile, the stratovolcanoes or continental volcanoes will tend to be more explosive since they melt to pieces of crust they have water vapor and stuff on them. And so you, they, they tend to be more violent and clog more than other volcanoes do. The only thing this picture does not show is uh, that when a continent coordinates with another continent, you're going to get massive mountain ranges like what happens in the Himalaya within the collision of India and um, the rest of the Asian uh, plate. Don't forget there's also trenches when the ocean forms against uh, collides with another ocean. And those will be very, very deep usually because the ocean is already deep and you're going to go even deeper if it's, it's a collision is happening between two oceans. Conversion boundaries, unique features are going to be mountain ranges, it's subducting plates and trenches whenever there's an ocean involved for the trenches. Uh, unique features of divergent boundaries is going to be mid-ocean ridges, the formation of new sea floor crust and that rift valley where the lava comes out of. And in transform boundaries, we'll have only earthquakes and volcanoes, which also show up in all the other types of boundaries as well.
I hope that makes it clear. And I hope you learned a lot in this video. I know there's a lot to it. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. We're going to talk about the, the continental drift theory and the evidence behind it and why continents form and break apart over long periods of time. I'll see you guys then.